What is it to be a man's man today? I mean, I grew up wanting to be a man's man. That's what you wanted to be, but today it's toxic masculinity, right? You're hearing it everywhere. People are being canceled for being a man's man. But the reality of it is, 1944, a man's man was storming the beaches of Normandy and uh, they knew most of them were gonna lose their lives, but they're like, nope, I'm doing this because this is what men are supposed to do. Today, people are uh, storming the beaches of their couch to play Call of Duty. 40, 50 years ago without social media, we had to go learn how to pick up girls and flirt and have lines and be rejected. Today, you just gotta swipe right. Years ago, you had to learn how to hunt to get your food. Today, you just call Uber Eats. Lots changed. Are men becoming pansies? Are they becoming soft? Are we becoming passive? Like, oh my gosh, betas, is that what's happening? I got a bunch of data I wanna to talk to you about that has to do with what we bench pressed 30 years ago versus today, squat. You know, our grip strength, bunch of different things that are influencing men to become softer. And for some of you that are watching this that completely disagree with my message, I would love to have you watch this message and uh, post your commentary below at the end of the video. Stick around till the very end, I got a quiz for you to take to know exactly what you're driven by, but it's important for us to look at some of the data to know if this is just gibberish or how are men really viewed and what kind of a life men live today. Before we get into it, I just wanna give you some stats on is there any relevance in men really struggling today? Like they can't find themselves. Are they really becoming softer or not? Scott Galloway wrote an article. The title was, The Most Dangerous Person in the World is a Young Man Who's Broke and Alone. Let me read some of the statistics that he has in this article. Men are more likely to use almost all types of illicit drugs at a higher rate than women, thus their higher prevalence of emergency room visits and inpatient substance abuse treatment. 93% of prison inmates are male, as are 98% of all death row inmates. Men are dramatically more likely to be homeless homeless and for longer periods of time. Men now account for 41% of college enrollments, down from 60% in 1970. Men are twice as likely to overdose, three and a half times more likely to commit suicide, and more than nine times more likely to be incarcerated. A recent study revealed that nine out of 10 mass violent attackers were male, and more than two thirds of them were under the age of 35. Once again, the most dangerous person in the world is a broke and alone young male. Scott Galloway recommends three things. Start making money. We are living in a capitalist society. Get super strong. You wanna be fit. You wanna lift heavy weights and run long distances in your mind and in the gym. And last but not least, get out there. Commit to meeting people and quite frankly, try having sex. So interesting three points he makes, right? Start making money today, get super strong, and finally get out and commit to meeting people, but are we not stronger today than we were before? Let's take a look at some data to see if men are stronger today than maybe 20 or 30 years ago. There's three things I wanna look at. I wanna look at our bench press to before, squat, as well as your grip strength. They say your grip strength is a strong predicator of mortality in later life. So are we stronger today or before? Here's what the numbers tell us. So they surveyed 1,800 lifters ages 20 to 39 to see what the average bench press was 30 years ago versus today. And here's what they came up with. What the average man could bench press 30 years ago versus today. 30 years ago was 240 pounds versus today, 187 pounds. Squat was 277 versus today, 225. So when you look at this data, how do you process it? Grip strength, bench, squat, like why are we looking at this data? Maybe, just maybe, they're trying to get women to become stronger and men to become weaker. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I will tell you at our vault conference, we had with a couple thousand people there, business owners, entrepreneurs. I challenged everybody to go do a certain questionnaire the first night and the next day come and share their breakthrough with everybody. While I'm going through everyone, a lady sitting right here, like seven rows right there, she gets up and she says, Patrick, I have to tell you my breakthrough last night. I said, what is it? She said, for the last 20 years, all I've been trying to do is compete against men to prove that I can make as much money as they make. I'm strong, I don't need them, I'm independent. I run a very successful salon, I do very well for myself. Everybody that works with me makes great money. I'm very, very you know, successful right now to my friends, to my peers. I said, okay, and where are you going with this? What's wrong with that? She said, the breakthrough I have yesterday is men are not the enemy. I want a husband, I want to get married. I want to have a family. How interesting is that, right? The person she wanted to beat the entire time, now she wants to marry. How many endless videos can we see with women in their 60s who bought into the feminist movement to make men and women equal are sitting there saying, 
I regret making that decision because I'm single, never been married, don't have any kids, and I'm alone. And I wish I would have married men. I wish I would have had kids because I wouldn't have been alone today. Next point is a lack of male role models in a boy's life or a man's life. So if you look at some data here in 2019, some 15 million children in the United States were living with a single mother. That's about five times more than those living with a single father. As divorce rates rise and family courts continue to favor mothers, the amount of boys living without a dad will continue to grow. So why is this so important? Well, there are certain things I can tell my boys that my wife can't tell them, period. I can go tell my boys we're going outside and we're playing, they have to listen to it. I can go tell my boys you have to read 20 pages a day. They may tell mom, mom, I'm good, I don't need to read today, I don't need to do this, I don't need to do that. There's just certain things my dad could have told me that my mom couldn't tell me. There's a very, very big value that men have in a boy's life, but the more divorces we get, and the more fatherless homes that we have, men don't know what it is to be a man's man. Matter of fact, let's look at a complete different angle. Most kids who go to school, most teachers are women. Most teachers are not men. So just recently had my kids watch Captain, the documentary about Derek Jeter, and there's a scene in this documentary where Derek Jeter is drafted by the Yankees. His dream becomes a reality. He always wanted to be a shortstop for them because his dad was a shortstop. He goes, but he's not doing well. He's making errors, he's making mistakes, he's doing all this stuff and he's having anxiety attacks. He's depressed almost and he makes a phone call to his house. Mom's talking to Derek and mom says, son, why don't you just come home? The father says, when I heard my wife saying this to Jeter, he says, I told her, don't tell him that. He can't know that's an option. So now, let's replay this. Say the father's not in a picture. Say the mom's able to convince Derek Jeter to come home because no mother wants to see their son suffer. And she's witnessing her son Derek suffer. But the father says, that's what builds character. Let him go through it. If that doesn't happen, you don't have a five-time World Series champion, few hundred million dollars, one of the greatest Yankees of all time, 3,400 hits. If that simple call by the father wasn't made, you, may, you and I may not know who Derek Jeter is. So what's the point here? So maybe, Men today need stronger role models to challenge them and to show them it is okay to go through challenges. It is okay to have to fight through. This is a part of becoming a man's man and it's natural. Next point is the walking on eggshell society that we're living in today. And what do I mean by walking on eggshells? People are afraid of offending today, okay? So when you're afraid of offending, you don't wanna share your opinion and the way people learn who you really are is by sharing your opinion and feelings about different issues. Now, in our family, I talk about four things with my boys. We lead, we respect, we improve, we love. Respect, let's talk about that. If you constantly spend your life disrespecting people, you're eventually gonna be alone and not successful in business because it doesn't work out if you wanna disrespect everybody. People are not gonna stick around in a work environment if you're disrespecting them. People are not gonna be with you friendship-wise if you're constantly disrespecting them and judging them. And quite frankly, you're, you're gonna be by yourself. Now, offending is a different story. Today, they're trying very, very hard to cause men to be careful with their thoughts and what they say. And God forbid you say something that's gonna offend somebody, you're walking on eggshells. I don't know many leaders that I call leaders who walk on eggshells that are not comfortable sharing their thoughts on different issues. They share their thoughts, but they get better at their soft skills to know how to deliver their messages better. That's something you're gonna get better at for the rest of your life. But walking on eggshell society where you're sitting there by yourself not really sharing your thoughts, it's as if you don't exist, you're non-existent. And that's just not what men's men do. The next thing I wanna to talk to you about is competition. Society wants to convince you that competition is not healthy for you. By the way, the same people that are selling you that are those who lost, who didn't know how to handle it. The reality of it is, socialist boys have limited options, capitalist men have unlimited options in every aspect of their life. Where they live, where they travel to, where they eat, who they date, anything you want. They have an unlimited supply of options and unfortunately, those who don't compete don't like the fact that you have more options. You know, when I was 14 years old, I was playing this 
Basketball Association for Troubled Teenagers. I'm in a league with Mara Sabatrucha, with Black Diamonds, with, you know, the Sureños, 18, with the Blood Crip, all these guys. And one day, we're in this tournament, and only five of our players showed up, and we played against a team that had a full lineup, and we lost by 104 points. They gave us this trophy that my dad has till today, a last place trophy, and he puts it right there, and he says, you know why we have this trophy? To remind you how bad you lost. It's almost like, experience the pain, son. And I'm like, dude, throw that thing away. He says, no, you lost by 104 points. Look at the psyche of a father. A mother would say, why would you do that to him? That hurts his feeling. My dad's like, that's exactly what he needs. The pain of a loss makes a man come back and improve. Makes him stay up at, late at night practicing while everybody else is sleeping. Makes this guy say, one day I'm going to prove to the world that I'm a winner. So, going back to you. There's nothing wrong with competing. There's nothing wrong with losing. As long as you keep showing up and competing, eventually you're going to get your shot. But you're better off being a capitalist than being a socialist because being a socialist is just not attractive. Final thoughts here, look, as you're going through the process from uh, being a boy to a man or from a man to a man's man, many times you're by yourself, say you don't have a father figure, say you don't have a strong male role model, you don't know who to talk to, and you're trying to please everybody, your mom's telling you, well, that's not the way to behave, and you don't have another man to bounce off the idea to think if it's a good idea or not. You're like, okay, I'm gonna please my mom. I'm gonna please my teacher, who's a woman. I'm gonna please my girl, who's a female. I'm gonna please my you know, girlfriend's mom. You're trying to please everybody, and you're becoming less and less and less of a man. And you're in the car by yourself saying, man, I'm losing my identity, I don't even know who I am. Then, you lean towards making bad decisions. Look, take a time out away from everybody and sit down and say, what do I stand for? What are your values and principles? What do you stand for as a man? What do you wanna do with your life? What kind of a leader you wanna be in your life? You. Who do you want to be? Not what everybody's trying to force you to become. Who do you want to be? Then go solve for that. And when you do that, be prepared for some people to not like it. That includes a lot of women in your life. Makes sense. And then all of a sudden you're going to be like, oh my God, I'm finding more men like myself out there. Fantastic. They're out there. They're everywhere. You can find them. Just like yourself. You are not the only one that's thinking what you're thinking right now. But you want to be a man's man. The world gives you more opportunities when you do so. We are living in a very, very competitive environment. So if you got value from this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I got two things I wanna share with you. One, I made another video titled, 20 Rules for Young Men. If you've never watched it, you must watch this one. And we have a quiz for you to find out what you're driven by. You can click here or go to pbdquiz.com to find out what motivates you and what drives you. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.